Lord, for the King of Kings tonight, the everlasting King, the one that is and the one that is to come. He's the King of Kings, he's the Lord of Lords. The Bible says in Psalm 100, verse 4, that we should enter his gate with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Are you here tonight? before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's just unmute and open our mouth and begin to appreciate this God, this wonderful Father, this everlasting King, the Lord of Wolves, the one that is mighty in battle. Let's unmute, let's open our mouth and begin to appreciate Him. He's awesome, He's faithful. Whatsoever He says He will do, that is what He will do. Let's appreciate Him. This is a month of Thanksgiving, yes. Is there about to be a month of Thanksgiving? If you look through all the months, January to November, to this time that we are still alive. Many are doing together this year. But right oh. now, they're ready to become. Many are nursing different kind of ailments in their body. Many are right. as big as oh, people for the But sure. they are not going to go back with and like we are telling him, I'm praising him of the Lord. It's a privilege for us. Harani kataye kataba. Ikara kuzi balant hayeni mastura bakayanama. If you have your hands and you can move it, you have your eyes and you can use it to see. Arena. I think we should praise the Lord to him. I think we should appreciate him. I think we should give him all the glory. Masturi makana masetelebe. Let's enter his Gate Bless the him. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. Ah, you're the same forever, Father Lord. Your name is to be hallowed, Lord. Adonai will worship you. Makuri ne kesi tabayan tayaba. Reki ne kasu kapayani ne kesekete. Makuri kasi rababa sheke kiriri. Makuri ne kesete ye. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We have come to return all the glory to you. All honor, all adoration to your holy name. Marenese te yende ni krapaya na koso tayanda. E rekete te ne mama si kapaya kate. E kataba le kete le mashi kete le bu. Makuzi ni matene te ye keze kende. E rabakoli kataya na kasi kete ye. O reka papara kute ne. Raduli masi kete ye ne. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we worship you. Makasi ni kataya na ma. I've come to return all the glory to you, Lord, because you're worthy of it, O Lord. Mezele kete yene kete pe, i re kete pe re kuli makaka, i gaga zaka baya talababa, re taba serenini. Let's unmute and begin to appreciate this King of Kings. Let's unmute and begin to exalt his holy name. He's worthy of our praise. Ni mamara kata ye, kasuri bakane kasi kapaya nama. There's no like him, there's no to be compared unto him. I re kanama kuzi rabanta ya, i kaka Sakaba Yekerim, great high work, great high work, Marene Kasetayama, Ega Suri Baba Shikenema Kasataba, Erekenema Kuzi Barente Yedene, Mashira Bakataba. Think of the goodness of Jesus, think of all his good deeds in your life, and begin to appreciate him tonight. Mirana Kasotayaba, Rekenema Kusa Payanda Namakisa Baye, Eke Kere Baba Kasekeke, Rema Kasanta Bayede. Let your hallelujah be to the Lord tonight mira kasuri baka ya katekete ye mashiri makata baba baba reke ni makusa baba reke te yeme thank him for his mercy thank him for his grace for his wife mercy that have not been consumed that we are still standing here today that we are still alive mare kabashenta ma among the living today it is not our doing oh lord maka reke te yende nene e reka bakusi ya makayata e kekeze kete manika baru reke makasuri bashenta 
yene i kakaraba kasetete makuni ke seketete le beregede ke sekete i kakure kete yene bu kashanda raba makuzu zabala tayani rekeni makasa tayaba if you are able to mute or mute and begin to appreciate god begin to exalt his holy name masura nataya masekeke reka makasada count your blessings and name them one by one masiri ba kashanda ba you will see how awesome the lord has been how great how wonderful ha ya 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 makare ke te ne de ge de de e kala bo se re ma kana ka to yi ni ka ta ba 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 ke ke te le be ma ku re ma ku to ma ya na ka re ke te ke ne de ge de de re ba ka ma ya na ka te ke ne de ge de de re ba ka ba ka ba ka 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 ba yi su ku ku ke ge de de ke ge de ke ba ka ba ba ki ka da da we are still praising God, we are worshiping Him tonight. I just want us to love on God before we go into the teaching tonight. For the Lord is good and His mercy is enduring forever. I'm reading from Psalm 9. He says, I will praise you, Lord. I'm reading from NLT. With all my heart, I will tell of the marvelous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. My enemies retreated. They staggered and died where you appeared. Mara Sakabaya. I will stop here first. I want us to just go to the Lord again and begin to say thank you, Jesus. He said, my enemies retreated. 
they staggered and died when you appeared. Do you know how many times that the Lord has appeared in your situations? How many times that you have showed forth that you don't even know? Just begin to say, Lord, I thank you. I've come to praise your name, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus, O Lord, for being there for me, Lord, for fighting my battles, O Lord. Marini makasita yamba reke te te. Begin to praise the Lord, begin to thank Him as the mighty man in battle, as the one that fights your battle for you. You don't know what the Lord is how he has fought that battle and he has given us a victory. I believe that we have no understanding to put him more tonight. He was generally to remember what people have been doing, what they 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 have been doing, some man, I want us to praise him as the judge now. He said, For you have judged my favor from your throne. We have judged with fairness. We have rebooked the nations and destroyed the wicked. We have erased their names forever. The enemy is finished in endless ruins. <laughs> The cities you uprooted are now forgotten. I want you to come before the judge of all judge and begin to say, Lord, I am thanking you for my for being the judge, oh Lord Daddy, over every situation, oh Lord, over my enemies, oh Lord, over every circumstance of my life, of my nation, of my business. Come before the Lord and begin to appreciate him as the judge that has ruled in your favor. I present myself to you as the judge. I present myself to you, Lord. I present myself to you, Lord. Lord, if there is any wicked way in me, I repent, O Lord. I repent, O Lord. I repent, O Lord. You are the righteous judge, and your word says that mercy triumphs. Of our judgment. So even as I have come to you, O Lord, as the righteous judge, I pray for that, that even as I have repented, that you will judge every case in my favor. That you will judge every case in my favor. Judge my intentions, O Lord. Judge the motives of my heart in the name of Jesus. And I can call you my sort of reality. Let all of my enemies judge me. Lord, you be the one to judge me. You be the one to judge my kids. You be the one to judge every mother of us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
Lord, we bless you. We worship you. Amen. Amen. We are still thanking God. This is December, the month of the birth of Jesus Christ. We are going to be thanking Him for the salvation that He has come to give to us. We are going to be appreciating Him. You say, Lord, I thank you for the salvation already. It is it is a grace that we have received. That is the first gift that we have received from the Lord. This grace that we have been saved. He came and He took all that pain for you and for me on the cross of Calvary he has the power to say I cannot do it again but at all every point in time he will say let your will be done let your will be done tonight I want you to come before the throne of God and begin to appreciate him First Thessalonians 5 18 says that in everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you if this is his will that he just wanted to do he said he, he all he has created us for is to just give pleasure to his holy name to appreciate him to glorify him so I want you to come tonight in this understanding that father Lord Adam your will, O oh Lord Daddy, is what I've come to do tonight, O oh Lord. To praise you because this is your will, O oh Lord Daddy. Masira manakataya makataya, baby. Because you died, O oh Lord, on that cross for us, O oh Lord Daddy. Because, O oh Lord Daddy, you allow the will of the Father to be done, O oh Lord Daddy. And not your will, O oh Lord Father, Lord. Tonight we are bringing your will to you, Lord Daddy. We have come to say thank you, Lord. We have come to give you, O oh Lord, praises, O oh Lord Daddy. Because this is what, Lord, you love, O oh Lord Daddy. This is what you take pleasure in, O oh Lord. Masene ba shekele bo shaka paparanda. Ekeli makasira thank him for the, the life oh lord that is his life that has given unto us lord, that we might have life and have it more abundantly thank the lord for the gift of I believe in him shall not all of that but have everlasting life. He has come to give us everlasting life. He has come to give us everlasting life so that we will not die. He has taken the key from death. Really, Kababa, she then Mama said that it is Marie. Thank him for the very Uri Bashakani, Liba Zuzi, Ipa Kasa, Ali, Uri Bashakazuka, Uri Baranda, Uri Bashakazuka, Ali. Ekipa zuza ubarandi Ali <laughs> Zipa <laughs> Shakazupa <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you, Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. So I got an understanding during the weekend, and <laughs> since that time, I've been like, oh God, you are so wonderful. We're praying, and it's just the Holy Spirit just showed it to me like when we are in the fire, He said He's there with us. He said in that storm that He is there with us, which means that He knows that there will be a storm. And he has prepared that platform. He had made it available for us to be there so that he can glorify himself. And many of us, we just complain when we find ourselves in one situation or the other. I begin to say, I've prayed, I've asked God, I've done this, I've done that. The Lord is not asking. But God wants to glorify himself. So tonight, I just want us to go in this understanding that, Father, I thank you for giving myself as a platform to glorify yourself. Because in that storm, when the Lord shows forth for us, when He comes through for us finally, the world will see and they will say, Wow, truly, He is a living God. So I just want you to go in this understanding and begin to appreciate God and say, Father, thank you, Lord, Father, Lord, for using me as a platform to glorify yourself. When I am in that fire, Daddy, I know you are with me, Lord, Daddy, and I stand still, Lord, Daddy. I, I had faith in you. I trusted in you because I know that you will come through for me. And you came through for me, Lord. I've come to say thank you, Lord, Daddy, for you using me as a platform, Lord, to glorify your name, Lord. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. I believe that we understand this prayer. That Father, thank you, Father, Lord, for using me as a platform to glorify your name. It is a privilege. It is a privilege. Many are there that the Lord did not glorify himself in their life. Thank God that, Father, thank you for using me as a platform to glorify your name. As I start to go in this understanding, I begin to appreciate him again. Amen. Amen. So we are still praying. I want us to go before the throne of mercy tonight. And we are going to be asking for God's mercy tonight. In any way at all, that we have lifted our situations, our challenges, our troubles, our afflictions above the name of the Lord. We are going to go before the Lord and repent tonight and say, Lord, we are sorry. Any way that we have 
we have lost faith in the Lord. That have not trusted him that he, that as he has promised us that he will be with us in the fire, in the storm, that we will not drown in that sea, that he will be available there with us. Anyway, Lord, that, that we have, oh Lord, that he brought you, Lord, lower than this, our, our situations, our circumstances, our problem, that we have lifted them above your name, oh Lord. Father, we have come in repentance tonight. We say, Lord, we are sorry. Father, we are sorry. I want us to just go before the throne of mercy tonight and begin to ask for the mercy of the Lord. That Father, Lord, I am sorry, Lord, that I am sorry, oh Lord, that from the, uh, some night that we have read, we are seeing all that the Lord has done for us. That he has fought our battles. He has been our judge. He has been our provider. He has been our supplier. He has been everything unto us. Let's all go to him and say, Lord, we are sorry, Lord. Daddy. Anyway that we have lifted our, our tribulations, Lord, our problems, Lord, Daddy. our challenges, Lord, above you, above your name, oh Lord. Father, we say we are sorry tonight. Anyway, we have not trusted in Amen. I from Hebrews 4 16 says, Let us us come boldly to the throne of our gracious Father. Here we will receive mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it mostly. I'm reading from NLT. So we have come tonight before the throne of our gracious God. Dear, we will receive mercy. So we have come to receive mercy tonight. So we are still asking for that mercy. That Father, we have come before your gracious, so Lord, throne tonight, so Lord, to receive mercy, Lord Daddy, that we can find grace, so Lord Daddy, as we are studying on grace tonight. Increase in grace is what we are studying on tonight. That Father, Lord, we have come before the throne of mercy, Lord Daddy, that we might find grace, oh Lord Daddy, receive that grace that we need, oh Lord Daddy, in times of need, in times of help, oh Lord. Father, Lord, we have come, Lord Daddy, that would you please have mercy upon us, oh Lord, and release that grace upon us, Lord. Release your grace upon us tonight. Father, we have come 
Kashura Tanin Setayen de la Baba. We have come before the gracious God, Lord Daddy. Rema Satayana Matikaba. To receive grace, Lord Daddy. Merika Kakarabadi de 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 de. Rima Kasara. So that we can find grace, Lord. Grace we want for the Lord tonight. Grace and Matosaba. Grace for all things, Lord Daddy, we need. Narina Makasaraba. Grace for help, Lord Daddy. In times of need, Lord Daddy. Grace for Ikaro. Rekete Yen. Makusa Taya, Nina Matayeni Katori Makama Neketaye, Ike <laughs> Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace that we have received tonight. We lift you high and exalt your holy name. Be magnified, Lord. Be now exalted. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. The man of God that the Lord is using for us tonight into his holy hands, that the Lord will touch him afresh tonight. He will touch his tongue with his fire. That every word that will be coming out of him will be coming from the throne of grace tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, that the Lord will release that which he wants us to hear, Lord, into him tonight. And it will be flowing out of him. Rataya, Baba. Like rivers of flowing water. So the spirit of the Lord will be flowing out of him tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will grant him strength, oh Lord, for this teaching tonight. The Lord will grant him function, Lord. Masira Bashendara. To finish on God in the name of your Dre Katayana Katababa, Rekeli Mama Tikabala, there are the speak white Lord Daddy. There shall be salvation, there shall be deliverance, there shall be healing, Rasta Baba. And the spirit of the Lord will come down like never before. It will saturate our environment in the name of your Mastika by Yeketelebu. The Lord will fill him with power. Reba Kenebu Shinnerebi, Repa Raka. Lord, you will use your son, Lord. Fresh heart, you will call upon you tonight, Lord. Your presence over him tonight, Lord. Marana Mashere will be one that cannot be consecrated in the name of just Ramba La Tatare, Reke Papa Ratada, Reze de Boschere, fill him afresh, Lord. Fill him afresh, Lord. Even right now. Holy Spirit of God, living God, come and take charge. Come and have your way tonight. Come and take your place. Oro manse de ma shere bara kata yoro kata yanda resete baro kata baba. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt your holy God. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. You can take over, sir. Bola. Yes, sir. Okay. We have to take some more prayers. I'm trying to figure out this, this stream thing. My assistant is not around. Um, any of the prophetic team, people that are able to lead a prayer for five minutes, please do so. Kudo or Judy Na, anybody who's on the call. Um, just let's take prayers for the next five minutes, please. Ready? Anybody who can do that, I'll be ready in five minutes. Thank you.
Victoria, can you organize that quickly? Can I continue? Can I continue? Yeah, you can continue, but I wanted somebody. Okay, Shadi, are you able to sing where you are? Can you give us a song where you are? Thank you. Yeah, it's always one thing or the other with this screen. So just bear with us. Um, it helps to have it on video so that we can um, get the message out there to more people than we typically do. Um, in the past, we did not give much concern and care to this thing, but the season has come um, according to the Spirit of the Lord for us to start doing these things. And that's why we are trying to get um, the streaming right. We are not technical people. The closest person that is technical in our house is perhaps my wife, but she's not currently available to help out with that. And um, we're figuring it out. We're almost there. So Shadi, are you able to sing where you are now? You give us a song. Sure, sure. Go sure. ahead, my dear. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, before I start singing, um, let's just pray in the Holy Ghost for a few minutes, um, just one or two minutes, and then we'll go into worship. But um, let's just, if you can come off me right now, let us just pray. Let us align our spirits right now with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Oh Lord, we worship and adore you. We align ourselves with you. We say, Hallowed be thy name, Hallowed be thy name, Hallowed be thy name. Oh Lord, we worship and adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, if you can, please, if you can come off, come, get off mute, and then I'm um, sorry, get on mute, and then if you know this song, please. I'm not singing for people, you know, not that anyone really thinks that, but as we stay muted, let's just join in worship. We just want to worship the Lord um, and set our hearts right for the word that's to be received. One thing we must take note of is, you know, if the enemy is fighting so hard every single week, fighting hard that the message does not reach us, that there is a reason why. So it's important that our hearts are tuned, our hearts are in the right frequency with the Holy Spirit. So if you can just worship the Lord with me, of course, while you stay on mute and then as we wait for the word to come. More than my mouth can testify. More than my mind can comprehend. See, I see the wonders of your grace. I'm so sure that this is not the end. Is it end? See how far you brought us. Is it end? I'm so glad you found us worthy. I can see 
I can tell and I know it's your grace all my days I will sing your praise my heart is full of gratitude to you and no one else but you Lord I'm here only by your grace thank you Jesus for not giving up on me oh, oh, oh as I sing for you brought me as I I'm so glad you found me worthy I can see I can tell and I know it's your grace all my days I will sing your praise Is there a way Sing and find you brought me Is there a way I'm so glad you found me worthy I can see, I can tell And I know that it's your grace all my days I will sing your praise Lord, we thank you for your grace. Let's come off mute right now and just worship the Lord and thank him for his grace because it is his grace that brought us. It is his grace that sustains us and it is his grace that will bring us to that glorious end. So if we can get off mute right now and thank him for his grace, thank him for his grace, raise a song and thank him for his grace. Lord, we thank you, we glorify your name, O God. La kupi zezi kende iparushka, zuzi kande iparushka, la basi zuzi kande iparushka, zeki na i la ruba zekende iparusha kazi, i kalu pa zuzi ipaura shaka zuzi kende. Lord, we worship you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. You're a good father. Leki pa zuzi kende ipa. Ure Shaka King of Kings, Lord of Lords, we adore you, Father. Paranda ile keshe kende iparushka, the kinda iparushka, Jehovah Nisi El Shaddai, Emmanuel, we love you, the kinda kende iparushka, the kipa zuze kina parushka zupa ane, the kipa zuze kina parushka zupa ule parushka, the kipa lupa rupa shakam, Jehovah Jireh El Shaddai, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, the kipa zuze bande uke. Parushka, Thank you. 
in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Father, we have come to bless your name, to give you all the glory, all the praise. We honor you and we adore you. We ask that you will take control. Thank you for the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. The victory that makes us confident in you. I ask that you open hearts today. Anoint my tongue to speak words that are spirit and life to you. Let Jesus be glorified when all is said and done. I declare I'm nothing. I'm humbled before you. You are everything to me. Would you become the words in my mouth? Would you saturate my heart? Would you cause an overflow so that truth can be spoken? The truths that make for our advantage in your kingdom. The ones that make us victorious over and over again. Thank you, Father, for bringing us to the end of this year. We don't take it for granted. Thank you for every grace discussed throughout this year. Every single grace. Thank you because you will teach us how to increase in these graces. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Guys, if you're on YouTube, can you confirm you can hear me well? If you're on YouTube, can you confirm my audio is clear? Can you confirm we have no problems with the audio? Please, this is important so that we can move. Can someone drop the link for YouTube on the Zoom chat? Can someone please do that? It sounds good, sir. It sounds good. Okay. I have to stop this stream shortly to do something quickly. Uh, my assistant is back. <laughs> So the devil is a liar and so is his mother-in-law, like I always say. While Amy uh, comes help out in this area, um, we need to um, discuss a few things. Um, guys, if you're new in our midst, I want to welcome you. Um, Thank you for making out the time to be on here to discuss with us or to be a part of what we are doing. I see a few new names. I'm seeing a name, Kelvin Emianto. Kelvin Emianto, you are welcome. Uh, Jathan, you are welcome. Um, I've seen Lily Malu before. Um, and I'm seeing Saw. So, S-U-H. I hope I'm pronouncing the name properly. You are welcome as well. Um, thank you for making our time to, to be a part of what we are doing. This is the Tribe of Marketplace Ministers. We were previously named Entrepreneurs in Christ. And God has, in this day and time, what He has done is He has given us a clearer focus a clearer vision and so our name is the tribe of marketplace ministers the bible says a good name is better than silver and gold and for that reason we um, place a lot of emphasis on names in our society the name 
had always been entrepreneurs in Christ and our tagline had always been a tribe of marketplace ministers. However, however, um, the issue is people did not look at that. People did not look at that. It wasn't something that they they understood. They didn't care about the, the, the all they saw was entrepreneurs in Christ. And that projected the wrong image about what we do. Okay, my my technical assistant has fixed the issue. And uh, let's see what we, if we can try this again to see what we can get done. Um, the reason why this is important to us to fix this is because God has placed an emphasis on us to um, begin to let the messages get further out. And like anything that is noble and a cause ordained by God, the enemy fights it. And so we've been relentless going to buy two or sometimes three of everything just to make sure <laughs> we don't have problems with this thing. The enemy still tries, always tries. Um, but God has been more than faithful and we are going to start in just a second. All right. Once again, you're welcome. I also want to um, compliment every single member of the tribe who has been um, a part of what we've been doing all year long. I want to thank ex especially the prophetic team, the prayer supervisory team, and every single person who has been a part of what we do. Um, I want to encourage you if you're new and um, it is your first time with us. We have been looking all year long on the different kinds of graces in the body of Christ. At the very least, grace that pertains to what we do. Um, this is very important. Our journey as a marketplace ministry, we have been looking at the graces for that. And so you can catch up on every single teaching um, that we have done or looked into this year um, as it pertains a uh, theme, Grace for Supernatural Works. Um, God gave us that theme. In marketplace ministry, there are things that we will need to do and we will need to have in place. Victoria, I want to move very, very fast. Time is fast spent. Please give me scriptures. I want to start with Zechariah 12 verse 10. Um, Shadi, can you confirm you can hear me well on YouTube? There isn't a problem with what we are doing. Please confirm. Please confirm. Very important to us that these messages get out wrong. We spent enough time. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Um, Sound clear. Thank you. We spent enough time in the background, not putting a face to what we are doing. We just um, preached our messages on audio platforms. And because for us, the goal is not popularity or nothing like that. It's just doing God's work. But a time has come that God is uh, putting a demand on what we are doing to uh, get to more people. Um, you can support us in prayer in this, in this thing, in what we are doing. The Bible says that there is a prince of the power of the air. And that prince sometimes will try to disrupt what we are doing. But God is greater and bigger and better, of course. All right, this theme for the month, December 2023, was given to us after much time in prayer and supplication uh, by the Holy Spirit. We had a few topics that we have chosen in our leadership team and our admin team, and we had two options to end the year with. The first option was grace for sweet marriage or grace for witty inventions. When Victoria sent me those two options before we uh, created the flyers for um, December 2023, I had to check with the Spirit of God and I said, are we still doing this? Should we just choose one and go with it? And then I felt 
a disturbance in my spirit and there was no um, green light on those areas the spirit of god said instead let me give you something that my emphasis is on in this season and so he gave us this topic ever increasing grace ever increasing grace and i want to take time to explain this thing listen i want to teach so please pay attention because what you're going to do in 2024 may depend on what we are giving out this month honestly i want to really break down this topic by the help of the holy spirit and i want us to really understand i want to furnish understanding because this came from heaven this came from heaven so we need to be able to um to really really teach to really really teach i hear that there is a small problem with my sound um not sure what's going on um hmm. okay we need to get my technical assistant back in here to help us but um, the enemy is a liar we are going to do this the right way and get it done properly um okay when we talk about ever increasing grace when we pick a topic like this my friends what we are saying is that there is a possibility of an ever increasing fraternity with the spirit of grace ever increasing grace listen a few weeks ago i had the pleasure of speaking at uh, king's hour um my wife gave me that responsibility and i spoke on the spirit of holiness we are going to upload that on the tribes channel um but there are dimensions to the holy spirit he is called a few different names the spirit of truth the spirit of holiness he is also called the spirit of grace all of these dimensions operate in the holy spirit and you can choose to fraternize with a dimension and if you do that that is how that is your access point i explained to the resource of eternal life this life the bible says is in christ jesus it is in the son of god god has given us eternal life the bible says and that life is in the son but you see on earth here the spirit of god was released to help us is our helper to access eternal life and there are certain dimensions that you need to fraternize with to access it if you are going to access ever increasing grace i'm showing you that there is a provision in scriptures before we even got to the new covenant the new testament that says that there is a spirit of grace there is a spirit of grace there is a spirit of grace um all right there is a spirit of grace this scripture says i will pour on the house of david and on the inhabitants of jerusalem the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication then they will look on me whom they pierced yes the bible says they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grief for him as one grieves for a firstborn it's like a conversation happening but this conversation we are seeing it switch from the first person to the second or third person it starts with i will pour on the house of david and on the inhabitants of jerusalem the spirit of grace the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication 
then they will look on me look at how it changes it says they will look on me they would look on me whom they have pierced and yes they will mourn for him as one who mourns for his only son and grief for for only for him as one who grieves for a firstborn it changes what it's saying again excuse me for a second on youtube i'm trying to fix this sound issue from what my wife is saying i hope it is better now oh my god okay they will weep for him they will weep he will weep and also um mourn as for his only son and grieve for him as one who grieves for a firstborn one who grieves for a firstborn the word grace in this scripture is charis charis it means the divine influence upon the heart and the reflection of that influence in your life listen i'm going to give you some truths today and if you get what i'm going to teach it to make a difference the spirit of grace the spirit of charis and supplication that word is charis and it is the spirit of grace that makes for the possibility of ever increasing grace if we are talking about ever increasing grace I'm telling you that it comes with a fraternity with the spirit of grace. A fraternity with the spirit of grace. All right. Now, I want to say how we got this topic. How it is in scriptures. The Bible talks about ever abounding grace. Ever abounding means ever increasing grace. If there is ever abounding or ever increasing grace then there is ever increasing glory there is ever increasing faith I've explained that there are three systems given to a believer to live a life of perpetual victory in Christ Jesus it is grace faith and glory so if we have ever increasing grace that means we have ever increasing faith an ever increasing glory i don't have time to pull it to us in scriptures i'm just trying to balance something i'm saying authority in god's kingdom is tied to glory the level of glory you operate in that's how we see authority in this kingdom but grace that one is tied to the degree of mercy that you have accessed in god's kingdom all right laying a foundation ever increasing grace ever increasing glory the bible says the more we behold him the more we are changed from glory to glory that's how we increase in glory because there are three systems i've gone over faith two thursdays ago you can get that recording on faith how you can increase your faith but then there is glory a major system in God's kingdom our emphasis is grace glory is increased by gazing at him through the word as we behold him we are changed from glory to glory for grace it is different the more we obtain mercy the more we exchange one level of grace for another level of grace now give me my key scripture my key scripture is romans 5 verse 20 to 21 i want you to pay attention oh thank god thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus now in this scripture we are seeing where the bible talks about ever increasing grace 
It says, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Grace increased much more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh my God. Let me say it again. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Much more. So that as sin reigned in death, the Bible says, even so grace might reign. And how does grace reign? We are told that grace reigns through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Give me this same scripture in NIV. Let's simplify it. Because this is our key scripture. Ever increasing grace means ever abounding grace. Grace abounded much more. Oh my God. Grace abounded much more. Now look at what it says in NIV. The Bible says the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. It increased all the more, ever increasing grace. So that just as sin reigned in death, the Bible says, so also grace might reign. How does it reign? It reigns through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. How does grace reign? The Bible tells us that grace reigns through righteousness. If you want the reign of grace, it is through righteousness. If you want grace to run your life, like an operating system. That thing is done through righteousness. <laughs> and that righteousness is unto eternal life. It brings eternal life. And that eternal life, we are told, is through Christ Jesus our Lord. You can put it back in New King James. I want to just show it to us in NIV. The Bible says the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase but where sin increased grace increased all the more so that as just as sin reigned in death that's how grace reigns through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord oh my God now before I go back to reading this again, give me Romans 6 verse 1. The next verse after this, that succeeds these verses. The next verse. Romans 6 verse 1. Apostle Paul begins a discussion. And if you look at his thoughts, you can put together the mind of God through his thoughts. He then says something. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue in sin? Since sin increased, grace increased because of sin. Shall we then continue in sin so that grace may abound? If you follow what he says, it says, God forbid. The next verse. It says, God forbid. But first, go back to Romans 5. Go back to Romans 5, 20. Look at what he says. Let's break down this verse. I want to ensure we, we fully understand. The Bible says the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, it became a reason for grace to increase all the more. I love how he put it. So that just as sin reigned in death, that is how grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's now break it down. The first thing it says is that our sin reigns in death. Verse 21. 
a sin reigns in death. That's how grace reigns in and through righteousness. I don't have time to make us repeat some words. But keep this in mind. As sin leads, reigns in death, grace reigns in and through righteousness. Sin leads to death. That's what he's saying here. If you follow the pathway of sin, it will lead you to death. However, righteousness will lead you to eternal life, is what he's saying. The life that is trapped in the Son of God. You can access it through righteousness. Please follow me, we're going somewhere. What do we do if we want to see ever-increasing grace? Because Paul is giving us some secrets here. He's saying that sin reigned in death. And for that reason, grace must reign through righteousness. But in verse 20, it says, where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Grace increased all the more. So what do we do if we want to see ever-increasing grace? The answer is simple. We go up on the scale, on the scale of righteousness. We go up on the scale of righteousness. Why? Because grace reigns through righteousness. And that righteousness is unto eternal life, which is found only in Christ Jesus. My friends, hear me well. If you don't have the life of the Son of God, no matter how pious and sanctimonious you have become, if you don't have the life of the Son of God, you cannot attain the standard of righteousness. You can't by yourself. If you're going to live a righteous life, which is what brings you to eternal life, it is done through Christ Jesus, the blood of his son. We are made righteous by his blood. The Bible says in Isaiah 64 verse 6, do you have it open? If you have it open, show it to us. Isaiah 64 verse 6, if not, don't worry. We are told in Isaiah 64 verse 6, that but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness as filthy as rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away yeah but we are all like an unclean thing all our righteousness are like filthy rags we all fade as a leaf that's what he says that means that something else qualifies us to be righteous it is the blood of his son through Christ Jesus. So, I've emphasized those two points. The first point is that sin reigns in death. Grace reigns in and through righteousness. On one corner you have sin. On the other corner you have grace. If you follow sin, you will get to death. If you follow grace, you will get to righteousness. It leads, it reigns through righteousness. Sin leads to death. Righteousness, which is our end goal, or, or not our end goal, our mid goal, brings you to eternal life, our end goal. Keep that in mind. And if you want to see ever increasing grace, the formula is very simple. I'm giving you the end from the beginning. The formula is for you to increase, to go up on the scale of righteousness. That's the correlation. Go back to Romans, Romans 5. If I've established that, I can move forward. Because we want to now begin to analyze this thing so that we understand. I'll say it again. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So the reason why God made a bucket of grace available it's because sin went up in the land. If you get that point, we are good to go. 
and he says that just as sin reigned in death that is how grace reigns through righteousness keep that in mind and that righteousness brings us to eternal life which is through christ jesus our lord all right we understand we understand now give me john 1 14 to 16. john chapter number 1 14 to 16. the bible says here and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. But then verse 16 says something very important. Of his fullness we have received, grace for grace grace for grace in god's kingdom a believer goes grace for grace faith to faith glory to glory these three systems are what you need to live a victorious life i'm saying it again you you should be listen oh my god your entire life you should be focused on achieving not money certain dimensions of glory, dimensions of faith, and dimensions of grace. All of these things will produce money. As opposed to chasing money 24-7, chase grace, chase glory and faith. But you can exchange one level of grace for a higher level of grace if you prophesied or if you have word of knowledge at the same level two years ago. It means you have not increased or gone up in grace. But at your walk with the Spirit of God, as you're walking with God, the grace on your life should increase every single year. That is the testimony of a Christian. It should increase. It should increase. Now, let's get back to scriptures. Now, give me Romans 6, 1 to 5. Romans 6, verse 1 to 5. Romans 6, verse 1 to 5. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He says, God forbid. This one says, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Oh, I love the scripture. Then he reasons and he says here, yeah, For if we are being united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of of his resurrection put this scripture in king james version that's how i memorized it i want to say that god forbid <laughs> king james version yeah very important god forbid my friends one of the biggest factors that makes for ever increasing grace ever abounding grace Besides your quest, your pursuit of righteousness is seen. Please, I want you to pay attention. If you are looking for ever increasing grace, there are two things that breaks it. But I'm explaining the first thing first. You're, you, you can choose to live a life of righteousness. That righteousness will lead you to eternal life, which is found in Christ Jesus. That is a possibility. And by that, you will access ever-increasing grace. But on the contrary, we are seeing that in Romans 5, 20 to 21, Paul is saying that 
when sin increases, God makes grace increase as well. He makes grace increase as well. So besides righteousness, sin. I'm not saying go and sin. Please just hear me well. Paul says in verse 6, chapter 6, verse number 1, what shall we say then? Shall we, the saved, the elect, continue in sin so that grace may abound? And he says, God forbid. Why? Because we are dead to sin. How can we then fraternize with sin anymore? I must point out that what Paul is saying, ever increasing grace, that comes by virtue of sin is not a justification for sinful life. He points it out very clearly in the scripture. God forbid. Sin cannot thrive in your vessel. And Paul makes that argument perfectly well in chapter 5, verse 21. Go back to Romans 5. Romans 5, 21. Go back to that scripture. Yeah. I want you to understand the scripture what it says here. Just as sin reigned in death. Okay, from verse 20. Where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So wherever there is more sin, grace increases as well. So that just as sin reigned in death, that is how grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to establish that. Now, the reason why we see that here is because there is a provision for eternal life through Christ Jesus, obviously. But I want us to examine the scripture and, and the context through which these things happen and are given to. Every marketplace minister can access what we call ever-increasing grace or ever-abounding grace as seen in this scripture. You can access it. And I'll show you how to access it. Where sin abounded or abides, grace abounds much more. That should be your memory verse today. Where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Romans 5, 20b. Where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. You see, in this day and time, someone like my wife and I, for instance, we live in the U.S. In the U.S., there are, there are a lot more liberal laws than you can imagine. You see laws that favor being gay, laws that favor homosexuality, all kinds of crazy laws. Those laws make sin thrive in the nation. Those laws encourage sin in the vessel of a, of a, of a Christian. You will see that there are a lot of young men suffering under the, 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 the lustful spirit of masturbation, the spirit of pornography and masturbation. The country permits it. It is seen. It is seen. And what we are seeing here is that sin leads to death because it reigns in death. As you are enjoying that pleasure of sin, you are dying slowly without knowing. I want to point that out. But my key focus is that wherever sin increases, the Bible says grace increases all the more. We find that wherever sin is in a particular place, there is ever increasing grace. How to access it is our problem. So I can stay in a country like the US, where there is so much homosexuality and lesbianism, there is a lot of sin. And for someone like me, it becomes my ticket, my express ticket for ever increasing grace my ticket listen if you get what i'm saying today oh my god 
making the choice for what is right won't be a problem for you anymore. You know, your mind has been shaped in corruption. You see that you want to get something passed in Nigeria or Ghana or Kenya, and it is bribery that you need to do. You have to bribe to get your way. Where sin increases or where sin abides, grace increases all the more. I have news for you. You don't have to go back that way. There is a provision in God's kingdom that makes for ever increasing grace and you can access it. I want to show you how to access it. Ever increasing grace. Perhaps you are you are listening to me. <laughs> oh my God. And you you have heavy witchcraft in your family. You don't know how to overcome it. <laughs> I'm giving you good news. Like my friends will say, I have a good news for you. <laughs> Where sin increases, grace dot much more increase. Oh my God. If you know what to do, you can access ever increasing grace in the context of that family. As all these kinds of rubbish laws are being put up in the US for God's people, all those laws that make sin thrive, all of those laws in our own eyes, they are making the grace, the qualifications for grace increase. Making it increase. Why do we need ever increasing or ever abounding grace? Why do we need it? Ever increasing grace. Number one. Number one. You have just one lifetime. <clears throat> in your one lifetime, you need to be able to achieve more in that one lifetime than you would if 10 lifetimes were given to you. That's what ever increasing grace is, is for. I'm telling you the truth. I'll say it again. The first reason why you need ever increasing grace is because you have just one lifetime. Listen, just pay attention to what I'm saying today. You have one lifetime. You see, in Nigeria, we have a Patrick. His name is Pa Adeboye. If you are in any country in our midst, you would have seen the sign of a redeemed Christian church of God in your country. One day I was in St. Lucia, a very small island for a retreat. I was driving my way back to the airport to leave the country. And I saw the sign of redeem in that island. I was wowed out. I was wowed out. In St. Lucia, they have redeemed. Oh yeah, they do. I went to a very tiny, exotic island for a retreat earlier this year. It's called Virgin Gorda. A part of the British Virgin Islands. They have redeemed in the British Virgin Islands. You have to wonder, the, the, the founder of the ministry, Pa Akindayomi, something like that is his name. That man did not expand beyond Nigeria. But a man comes in that understood what I'm telling you today called ever increasing grace. And that man began to plant branches everywhere. That man has achieved more in one lifetime than in 10 lifetimes somebody else would have had. The first reason you need ever increasing grace is so that you can achieve more in one lifetime than 10 of you put together. The same thing for Apostle Paul, the man that gave us this understanding, who knew that that man would be the person that wrote more than half of the New Testament. What you need is ever-increasing grace. 
ever increasing grace. Number two, why do you need ever increasing grace? We need it because God's people perish for a lack of knowledge. Oh my God. There are things that are activated on the basis of knowledge. Believe you me. There are things that are activated on the basis of knowledge. Everything in God's kingdom increases. Everything. Glory increases. Faith increases. Grace increases. You just have to know the systems through which and by which they increase. Listen. Oh my God. You see, okay. I've been married to my wife now 10 years by God's grace. That woman is looking more beautiful than when I met her. You know what she tapped into without even knowing? Ever increasing grace. Because grace pertains to every dimension of grace that we've discussed this year. If you are graced in a particular area, that grace can increase if you know what to do. There is a knowledge that you need to have. And that knowledge is what God's people are lacking. If you have this knowledge I'm talking about, you will achieve more in one lifetime than you will achieve in 10 lifetimes put together. Because the currency God deals with in this kingdom, that currency is called grace. It's called grace. The third reason why you need it. Every dimension of grace is actually needed here on earth, not in heaven. That's the funny part of it. You see, in heaven, they are not prosecuting destiny anymore. Their job is to worship the great king 24-7. So grace, even though it comes from heaven, there is a throne that administers grace in heaven. That grace is needed here on earth, not in heaven. You are the one prosecuting life and destiny on earth. And the purpose of grace, can I tell you, is so that you can become a display of signs and wonders. Signs and wonders that attract a harvest, a harvest of souls into God's kingdom. A harvest of souls. That's why you need it. If you don't have ever increasing grace, or you don't know how to access it, oh, you may have favor, it will stay on the same level. God may have made you beautiful as a woman, it will stay on the same level. There is something called ever-increasing grace, where every dimension of grace you access can be increasing in your life. This is true. Three years ago, my teaching grace was not at this level. Anointings are graces given by God. But graces may not be an anointing. That's the difference. So my teaching anointing was at a particular level two years ago. The same with last year. But now, because of ever-increasing grace, that anointing has increased. Listen. Ever increasing grace is like going to the gym. You need to put work in for it to increase. If you don't put in the work, it doesn't grow. I'm telling you the truth. Everything in God's kingdom grows based on your work, on you putting in the work. And every grace you've accessed, it can grow. The Bible says where sin increased, grace increased all the more. It was not the same grace, it's increased. It increased. 
when you see some of some people patriarchs that should be in their house resting watching african magic you see these men of god jumping from crusade to crusade you have no clue what they are doing they know how grace increases they know people that god has satisfied and exalted promoted them before all men why are they jumping from crusade ground to crusade ground why ever increasing grace that's why see in the first instance grace comes but it comes on the basis of a need and that need can be ministry need it can be personal life needs whatever need it comes it's irrelevant you must understand that grace is the building block that God uses and runs his kingdom of operations here on earth with if God is involved he supplies evident grace that's how we know God is involved there will be a grace that will set that apart. That grace will be evident. You will realize that, for instance, if the man is teaching, this is not something that came by means of a research. There was a grace that supplied what that man is saying. That's how you know God is involved. Because in this day and time, we've seen people that use comedians to attract crowds. We've seen that. So we need to know those that there is a supply of grace to run what they are doing from God's kingdom. If I am a teacher and I begin to teach, that grace should begin to grow. That's the first one I'm giving you to increase that grace by using it. And let me add this. There has to be a way for us to measure the increase of grace in your life. If it is indeed increasing, we would know. Just because it is spiritual does not mean it cannot be measured. Oh no, we can measure it. If the grace on your life has increased, you will achieve the same task with shorter effort and in a shorter amount of time. If the axe head is blunt, the man will need to apply more force unless he wet the edge the bible says i don't have time to open scriptures let me show you a biblical example of grace we know jesus christ was grace personified the bible says we beheld his glory that glory was full of grace and truth but we see through scriptures other persons that had similar grace they had a dimension of grace that continued to increase give me daniel chapter number one verse 15 to 21 let's look at both sides of the coin and i want to show you a story whereby a man of god was planted in a place full of sin because our memory verse says where sin increases grace doth much more increase if there is sin in the land the grace god is ready to back you up with will be evident it will increase as well daniel was in babylon babylon was a place full of sin it was worse than america full of sin however this man managed to maintain a lifestyle of righteousness he managed he did that you know what you do give me um daniel 6 verse 10 first daniel 6 verse 10 do you have that open daniel 6 verse 10 daniel 6 verse 10 let me show you something first because he was in babylon all right there was a lot of sin in babylon on the other hand let's look at what this man did that brought so much grace into his life 
if you know Daniel's story, the Bible talks about when a petition was signed that nobody should worship any other deity except the king. Now, let's pick it up from verse 10. The Bible says, now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chambers towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees and three times a day he prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. This man understood the practice of righteousness. Oh yeah, he understood it. He understood it. This is the practice of righteousness. A consistency in righteousness. But let's look at how he began. Go back to Daniel 1, verse 15 to 21. Daniel 1, verse 16 to 21. Oh, each time I read this story, 15, 15, 15, Daniel 1, 15 to 21. Each time I read this story, I get excited. Where sin abides, grace doth much more abound. It's okay. The Bible says at the end of 10 days, there are features. Now, before here, we got here rather, um, Daniel was brought in captivity into Babylon. They brought him into captivity. They brought him and his friends. You know them, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Abednego, all of those names, you know. They brought them and they wanted to give them the portion of the king's meat. Unfortunately, they declined because of their consecrations. And we now want to see the story how it happened here. The Bible says, at the end of 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus, the steward took away their portion of the delicacies and the wine that they were to drink. And instead, he gave them vegetables. Now, look at verse 17. The Bible says, as for these four young men, God gave them knowledge. God gave them skill in all literature. And God gave them wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Keep that in mind. Verse 18 says, At the end of the days, when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs, brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. I don't think to explain the things. Then the king interviewed them, and amongst them all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they served before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. Thus, Daniel continued till the first year of King Cyrus. Guys, verse 17 is a key emphasis. Verse 20 is a key emphasis in this scripture. The Bible says they had knowledge, they had skill, they had wisdom. That is not faith. I hope you know. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and skill you can't attribute that to faith neither is that glory glory pertains to where you are in, in, in God's sight in, in his kingdom these are deposits of grace keep that in mind now how did they get there the first thing we see is that they decided to consecrate themselves before God righteousness now before they did this they were brought as captive slaves to a land full of sin the proof that babylon was full of sin is what we see in verse 20. it says that there were magicians around the whole place there were astrologers around the whole place in the realm keep that in mind there was witchcraft there was sorcery, divination, occultism, 
You name it, they had it in Babylon. But the Bible says, where sin abides, grace dot much more. Grace dot much more abides. You see, grace will always be increased by God in any environment that sin is thriving in. That's the one thing that pains my heart that we don't emphasize in the body of Christ. A few years ago, I was serving my first spiritual mentor, Dr. I.S. James. A young man made a vow and said that because he had caught himself in the trap of masturbation and he was tired of his life because he was a Christian trying to serve God and this guy kept on finding himself in masturbation. So he went to see my spiritual mentor and he said, if I don't end, if this circle of masturbation does not stop, I'm going to end my life. He said that to him, that he would end his life. <laughs> oh my God. Keep in mind that wherever sin abides, grace dot much more about. People have not been taught how to access these dimensions of grace. And grace is what God would have supplied him to go through that season. Because before the week was out, he found himself again in that sin. Grace dot much more abound. Now let's look at where the practice the practice of righteousness landed Daniel. Because we saw that he was consecrating. He was praying three times a day, giving thanks to God. He was fasting, doing all kinds of things. Let's now look at the grace that was increased in his life. Because we see here in verse 15, we see here rather in verse 17, that God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And then the Bible says Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. That's, that's the dimension of grace. It can be said that he was graced in that dimension. If you had a dream, Daniel could interpret it for you. And if you had any kind of vision, he was your man. He was your man. Now let's now trace what happens to Daniel. Because grace is supposed to abound wherever sin abides. It's an automatic thing in God's kingdom. If there is a deposit of sin here, that's where God puts his grace. Now a time came in the near future. Give me Daniel 5.11. He had been called by Nebuchadnezzar to interpret his dreams. And he had done that. We saw where Daniel would take, King, give me some time. Daniel 5, 11. Give me some time. Let me go and pray before God. And I will come back and give you the meaning of your dream. We saw that. A time came when the king was changed out. And another king came in. And that king had a handwriting come on the wall. Victoria, if you are there, I need Daniel 5.11. Daniel 5.11, please. So we see where that king had a problem. They took out the items from the temple that were consecrated items before God. And this king began to drink with the cup of the temple. And the Bible says a hand came on the wall and began to write, Mene, mene, tekelo for sin. And nobody could write or interpret what was being written. Nobody could do that. And then the queen mother comes in and says, Ah, you may have tried all the magicians in your realm, all the witch, witchcraft people and all the occultism. I have a guy for you. Now look at how the hidden queen read out his CV. Oh my God. To show us that grace had so increased in this guy's life, he was placed in a different category. The same graces that he had, wisdom, understanding, skill, dream interpretation and visions. Now look at what happened. Look at how she described him. 
I love this. Each time I read this part of scripture, I get excited. Oh my God. Look how she, look how she, she, she inter interpreted him. She said, there is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king said, has made him, I can't see the rest of this thing, chief of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans and soothsayers. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods was found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, the king, made him chief of the magicians, of the astrologers, of the Chaldeans and soothsayers. Well, we saw Daniel in chapter number one. This guy was good, but he wasn't that good. The Bible says he was better than them. But now we see where he was made the chief of all the witches in the realm. <laughs> An increase in grace. An increase in grace. An increase in grace. Now, let me give us the things that lead to ever increasing grace. There are things that lead to ever increasing grace. And if you know these things, you will begin to see that every grace in your life can be increased. I'll give you a key secret. They are all tied to righteousness. Go back to Romans 5.20. They are all tied to righteousness. All of them. Where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that, for the reason that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign. How does grace reign? How does grace increase? It increases through righteousness. Oh my God. To the end that it may bring us to eternal life. And that life is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Memory verse, keep it in mind. Now give me Proverbs 4 verse 18. I want to give us the things that lead to grace. Proverbs 4 verse 18. Look at this scripture. The path of the just is as the shining light. And that light shines more and more onto the perfect day. This is indicative of ever increasing grace. If you are a just man, a just woman, if you are righteous in the sight of God, he will put you on a path. God did not say it is a just that begins to shine more and more. It is the path of the just. And I've heard many preachers misquote this thing. It's not the, the, the just. It is the path, the pathway. The pathway of the just that increases as the shining light. And this is indicated that God begins to put you on a pathway that leads to ever increasing grace. It shines more and more onto the perfect day. More and more. That pathway is called the way of righteousness. So let's examine some acts of righteousness that get us to ever increasing grace despite the predominance of sin wherever we live for you your own sin may be bribery and corruption in your country for me it may be that homosexuality is thriving in america all kinds of laws being passed wherever you find yourself living in where sin abides or where sin increases the Bible says grace doth much more increase. Keep that in mind. It means you are a qualifier. You are qualified for ever increasing grace. And what you need to do to see ever increasing grace in your life is the practice of righteousness. But let me show it to you how you do it. 
The first key is accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Give me John 1 17. John 1 17. That's the first key. For those on Zoom, if what I'm saying makes sense, give me a thumbs up. Make sure that you're being carried along. Ever increasing grace. All right. All right. That's good. The first key is accepting Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. That's the first key. The Bible says the law was given through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. For the law was given through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. You cannot access grace. Talk less of ever increasing grace if you don't have Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is sad but true. That's the first key. That's the first key. Number two, consecration. Last week, Wednesday, we thought about consecration. Minister Yemi will take us on a journey on Wednesday on consecration. Don't miss it. And if time permits, I want Amy to teach as well before we close down for the year on consecration. It's a major secret in God's kingdom. Go back to Daniel 1. Give me verse 20. Daniel 1 20. Look at what Daniel said. No, no, you have it open already, madam. Just follow the progression, please. Yes. Open, open it quick. Let's move fast. Daniel 120. Consecration is a major secret. If you want ever increasing grace, there is something we do to qualify for ever increasing grace. Where there is the predominance of sin. You have to demonstrate to God that you are his own. You belong to him. An exclusive right of access. Exclusive right. In Nigeria, a king that was married um, divorced his wife. Then the wife remarried, not knowing that it is a forbidden law in Yoruba land. If you become the property of a king before, you cannot let another man sleep with you. Sad but true. All of these laws were carved out of the spirit realm. They know the importance of it. The same thing holds sway in consecration. But look at the end of his consecration in verse 20. The Bible says, the king found them 10 times better. Ever increasing grace. 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers in his entire realm. There are those that will be doing the same thing you do, the same business you do, the same thing that you do. But somehow there will be something that will make you 10 times better. That's the power of consecration. You will begin to emit something very strange. People won't be able to pinpoint what is on your life, what's making the difference in your life. That is the power of consecration. That's the power of it. You will just emit a strange incense that only God understands. But in the midst of men, every sphere you come into, you will come out, you will come out 10 times better. That's the power of it. Now, number three is humility. Give me James 4 verse 6. James 4 verse number 6. Humility. How do we get ever increasing grace? He gives more grace. The Bible says. Therefore he says. God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. That grace you are looking for. The ones that people covet. The secret key to those graces is humility. You have to know how to humble yourself. He gives more grace. 
more grace, the Bible says. Number four is the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. Give me Jabez's story in 1 Chronicles 4 verse 10. If you have it open. The story of Jabez. No, it's okay. You don't have it open. It's okay. It's all right. I want to run. I want to run. Almost out of time. The story of Jabez. The Bible says, Jabez called on the God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. That your hand will be with me. And that you would keep me from evil. That I may not cause pain. And the Bible says, God granted him what he requested there is something called the hand of the lord on your head it makes for ever increasing grace the hand of the lord that your hand will be with me number five the way of covenant give me some 50 verse 5 the way of covenant the way of covenant. you want ever increasing grace Listen, ever-increasing grace is what makes people's lives a mystery. Not a misery, a mystery. A mystery. I heard that a particular church in Nigeria planted 84 churches in one year in different nations. It's a mystery. It is done by covenant. Covenant. God are my saints together to me who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now give me Genesis 26, 12 to 15. Let me show you what covenant does to you. This is the story of Isaac, the son of Abraham. The Bible says in this scripture, Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Keep in mind, God had a covenant with his father. He's called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Covenant. And the Lord blessed him. Now look at this very strange verse 13. I have studied this verse a few times and it still puzzles me till date. The man began to prosper. That's okay. I wish he stopped there. But there was a need to say that the man continued prospering until he became a very prosperous man. The Bible says, for he had possessions of flocks, possessions of herds, and a great number of servants. And the Philistines envied him. How can a nation envy a man? One man, a nation, is done by covenant ever increasing grace now the philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of abraham his father they tried to stop the guy they realized that there was no formula to his prosperity whatever isaac did he would prosper and they could not comprehend it it's covenant covenant is that thing that secures prosperity so that if you were walking in the grace for abundance, it continues to increase and increase. And people would think you went to go and do something else. No, you engage covenant. The God of covenant. That's how it's done. The God of covenant. Number six. Executing projects ordered by God. Projects ordered by God. As you spend the money... It will keep coming in. That's how big churches were built in Nigeria, if you're wondering. Without loans. <laughs> oh my God. If God orders the program, there is a provision of ever increasing grace. It's a key secret. Ever increasing dimensions of grace. Number seven is coveting the best gifts in the body of Christ. Coveting. The only time coveting is legal in scriptures is when it pertains to spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1. Covet the best gifts, but I show you a more excellent way. The Bible says, do you have it open? 
Okay, give me the full chapter. That's the end of it. The end of it, rather. So that would be verse 20 something or so. Covet the best gifts, but I show you a more excellent way. Yeah. So 31 says, but desire the best gifts. Put it in King James. I love how King James puts it sometimes. Covet the best gifts. Now, the reason why coveting works, I must tell you, it creates a pool of hunger in you. And that hunger is legal, spiritually. That hunger is legal. Covet the best gift. Covet the best gift. And yet I show you a more excellent way. Um, the next one, verse, um, number eight, is the way of love. Because then it goes into giving us the way of love. I'm showing you how you can get into ever increasing grace. The way of love. The way of love. I had a story of a popular evangelist in America. Um, this man had the pleasure or the displeasure to work with kids that were autistic. And he didn't like that he would, he was trying to save them and make them into what God had made them to be. But he kept on re getting resistance and then one day he said i will do whatever it takes to release them from this thing the guy went on a 14 day fast dry fast just drinking water did a 14 day fasting and then he came back then he spoke and said you demon i command you in the name of jesus out of him and all of a sudden the demon threw the guy around the whole place and he was released from that thing but when he checked himself he said what made him do that 14 day fast was he just had a genuine love for those patients and he could not get them to be released from that thing and he said i will do whatever it takes whatever it takes to release them from this thing many of us don't have love as our mindset love has to be the driving force when God sees that you understand love, he puts more grace, more grace, more grace in your life. The way of love. Then number nine is alignment with the Spirit of God. Aligning with the Spirit of God. And that is done through obedience. You align through obedience. You align with God through obedience. You want God's hand to be strong on you, it's done through obedience. The Bible says in Acts 5.32, if you haven't opened it up, Act 5.32. And we are his witnesses. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Now, the dimension that you begin to relate with is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace. That's one of his dimensions. So God gives that to those who obey him. That's how we access more grace. When you align with the Spirit of God, what you have done is you positioned yourself to receive ever-increasing grace. And then through in the path of supplication, go back to Zechariah 12.10. Zechariah 12.10. It says, I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the Spirit of grace and the Spirit of supplication. They go hand in hand. The spirit of grace walks with the spirit of supplication. They will look on me whom they pierced. Now, supplication means the act of asking or the act of begging for something earnestly or humbly. It simply means to plead humbly. If you begin to do supplication, what you are doing is fraternity with the spirit of grace. Because in supplication, our inadequacies are exposed to us. And then God becomes magnified in our vessel. Ever-increasing grace, I must mention, also means ever-increasing truth. The Bible says grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So ever-increasing grace also means ever-increasing truths. I want to round up now. 
of the tribe of marketplace ministers this year my friends we have discussed quite a number of things the first thing we discussed in January was what is grace we went to grace of favor in February we looked at grace for abundance the grace for divine health the grace to give the grace for speed the grace to forgive the grace for influence the grace to serve the grace for leadership I'm trying to tell you that every grace we have covered this year all of those graces can be increasing be going up on the scale in your life it can be ever increasing now how do you keep operating in this dimension the first thing is to take inventory of where you are you can't lie to yourself what grace do you clearly have in your life and what grace do you lack what graces do you have what graces do you lack you can plant yourself or god can plant you in the midst of a sinful people number 2 Apostle Laomi Osai received an assignment in Makodi and I'm using his I'm using his um example for a reason Makodi is a place that we've had the stories is given us they worship all kinds of things over there all kinds of things in fact when they were building their church their new church building there was a snake as the story goes <laughs> and they had to do some things and they had to pray to let the snake be chased away where sin abides or abounds keep in mind that grace dot much more increase if god plants you in the midst of a sinful people or if he has sent you to the midst of a sinful people he is trying to qualify you for great grace increasing grace or you can take the initiative yourself and go on missions to places void of christianity you have a mission one of my colleagues in ministry went to pakistan this summer for ministry work and he was telling us about the healings and miracles that god did they were intensified because he went to a place that were predominantly muslim anywhere sin is on the increase grace is also on the increase grace a few years ago apostle ramen said he went to a particular country in africa in that country they didn't have a hospital close by and they had witchcraft that had taken the territory and subdued that territory witchcraft heavy witchcraft in fact they came to attack him on the altar heavy witchcraft and he says that that was one of the places that the hand of god was so strong in his life so strong on his life that day the kinds of miracles that he saw he blessed a stream of water and people were still being healed 24 hours later it's because wherever sin abides grace dot much more in grace so if you are going to that kind of a territory just know that god has also engraced you with a rod of authority one of my mentees went to a place where there was so much prostitution this year so much prostitution and she couldn't believe what she was seeing <laughs> but that is the kind of place where grace is increased grace is increased because anywhere sin abides anywhere sin is on the increase grace is also i now understood why a particular minister under rcn has so much grace operating with him in that particular city the sin is on the increase god has to match his ministers listen have you heard of a man of god an indian minister called um prophet 
Sadhu Sunda Selvaraj. If you've heard about him, can you put your hand up? Sadhu Sunda Selvaraj. Has anybody here heard about him? Yeah. Popular prophet of God. Sadhu Sunda Selvaraj is well graced in the prophetic. One day, I went to God in prayer and said, how can one man have all these dimensions? All of these dimensions, and then we are here struggling. Then God opened my eyes. The man's ministry is planted in India. See, India, Christianity is not high on their, on their list. They rather serve their 500 or so, or 5,000 deities the elephant, the cow, all the deities. Prophet Sadhu Sunda Sovereign has met every prophet in the Bible that wrote a book. Isaiah fellowships with him. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah, he has met him. I know you read Zechariah. This man has had fellowship with <laughs> He has had fellowship with them and he has asked them questions. Yes, it's legal. The Bible talks about a cloud of witnesses. They are legal, trust me. He has met all of them. And I'm like, God, how come we don't have these dimensions? God said, where sin is on the increase, grace doth much more abide. That's the secret. There is the fact that that man is, is in that kind of a place. God has to release corresponding grace to match what he's doing. He said several times he was praying and Jesus walked into the room. The Lord Jesus Christ that you pray to walked into the room. And they began to pray together. I'm wondering, is this a dream? No, not a dream. In real life, reality. The secret is that wherever sin abides, grace doth much more abide. But you have to toe the path of righteousness. And God releases corresponding grace. Don't forget where we came from. I said, if you've accessed ever-increasing grace, you've also accessed ever-increasing mercy. Because the key to grace is mercy. Let us come to the throne of grace, not to obtain grace. To obtain mercy, so that we can find grace in our time of need. They are all connected. Mercy, righteousness, grace. So, outreaches, you can do an outreach to India. God will meet you with grace. You will be shocked the kind of hand that will come on your life. You'll be shocked. See, there are things that we've done in ignorance in the body of Christ. And that time has come to an end. God wants to equip us with the graces needed for the work. See, the ones who went over this year at the tribe those graces are simply to help you work on the pathway of marketplace ministry there are diversities of graces diverse graces diverse graces there are anointings that we've gone over last year there are graces this year but if you don't have work that you need to do why should God give you increasing grace? Grace is supplied as a building block for the work you have to do. One day I, I just looked at Apostle Aramis. I said, this man is, before you can even watch one message, he has jumped to the next city. My God, how are they doing it? God is supplying ever increasing grace. That's the secret. When you see a man like Daddy Kumui, in his 80s, jumping from crusade to crusade in countries. What does that man know that we don't know? Ever increasing grace. Ever increasing grace. You can't listen. You are too young to be tired. You are too young. The work is just starting. And God wants to release commensurate grace. So that you can have worldwide impact in what you want to do. But those are the keys to get there. So start doing missions to places void of Christianity. 
Go to Pakistan. Go to Saudi Arabia. Places that are void of Christianity. God will meet you with commensurate dimensions of grace. Outreaches, crusades. All of these things. We're planning a, 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 an outreach meeting now, for instance, this week, five days from now, headed by Mercy and the team of outreach people in Abuja, to go and minister to 50 or 60 widows. How many widows, Mercy? 50 widows or 40 widows? I'm, I'm confused. A, a few amounts of widows. 60 of them, sir. 60 widows. So those kinds of things attract God's, listen, you would obtain mercy, you would find ever increasing grace. Because you are working with what God has given you. You are working with it. And then don't forget a perpetual plea for God's mercy. Listen, the more I walk with God, the more apparent it has become to me how how devoid we are of his mercy how void we are we need his mercy every day every second every minute of every day his mercy that's how we find grace we come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy so you must always plead for god's mercy always i was praying for someone over the weekend the person probably doesn't even know no, i'm praying for them Pray and say, God, have mercy. Please have mercy. We can't afford for what happened to this person to happen to this person. Please have mercy. Just having mercy. Praying for God's mercy. Then God will respond with grace. He will release grace. Listen, earlier this year, God gave me an instruction. He said, teach the School of Marketplace Ministry. And I began to teach that class. Five days a week, I taught Apostles on Monday, prophets on Tuesdays, on Wednesdays, evangelists, Thursdays, pastors, Fridays, um, teachers. I taught all of those things. Do you realize that one teaching can suck so much virtue from you? Victoria, when you tried to teach it for one week, what happened to you? Give us feedback. When you taught it for one week, what happened to you? I got sick, sir. School of Marketplace Ministry. She got sick. And now I taught it back to back for nine months. Nine months, nonstop. God made grace available. Because when you are teaching, it's not just the words you are speaking. Things are leaving your spirit, going to people. That alone is an impartation. So now I don't have to say this person, this person. You will go to bed and you have encounters. You will be surprised. Because God is taken from the person ministering and is supplying somebody else. It is that we put ourselves on the line for the work that God wants to do. That is how we qualify for ever increasing grace. The first thing is that where sin abides, grace doth much more increase. And then you tow the path of righteousness. You have many things you can do. Consecration, humility, the hand of God, the way of covenant, executing God's projects, coveting the best gifts, the way of love, aligning with the Spirit of God, towing the pathway of supplication, but first accept Christ as Lord and Savior. It sucks virtue from you. So what I want to do, if I, I'm tired, do I say, God, you gave me an instruction to teach the school of marketplace ministry. Would you supply grace? Supply grace. Even when I was sick, in the nine months, I was still teaching because there was so much grace supplied. There's so much grace supplied. There's so much grace supplied. Now, let's look at what ever-increasing grace looks like again. Genesis 26, verse 12 to 16, as we put come to an end. Genesis 26, 12 to 16. I love this story. Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. That alone is a message on its own. But look at something that happened here. And the Lord blessed him. 
the man began to prosper. The man continued prospering until he became very prosperous. That is the picture of ever increasing grace. The Philistines came and said, please depart from us. Depart, leave us. You are much mightier than us. Imagine one man, mightier than an entire nation. One man, because of covenant. And this is the same Philistines that oppressed, oppressed the Israelites with Goliath. If Isaac was alive, they would have run from them. But because one man understood the pathway of covenant, one man. I'm going to stop here today. And I want to believe that we've gotten something from what I'm teaching today. Keep in mind, anywhere there is sin, grace dot much more increase. And I want to speak to those struggling through families, through their families. You are dealing with witchcraft, occultism, sorcery in your family. I have news for you today. In that same family, God planted you and he has supplied for you a bucket of grace. Because anywhere sin increases, grace is on the increase as well. God bless you guys. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've delivered your word. Let it seep into the heart of those that need it. Let it take root downward and produce fruit upward to tow the pathway of righteousness. Not look at the sin, to ignore the sin, but to embrace the pathway of righteousness. Because wherever sin abounds, grace doth much more increase. And so we shall not continue in sin for grace to abound. Instead of that, we choose the pathway of righteousness. Would you help straighten our hands? And as we choose the path of righteousness, let the crown given to those who, who step into the virtues of eternal life be released. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Guys, thank you for joining us. Um, for those on YouTube, we're reverting to come back to um, the, the Zoom call. A few announcements. On Wednesday, Minister Yemi will be teaching us on consecration. God had prepared him specially for us on Wednesday last week. And the enemy tried to inter, 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 interfere with that. So we can't wait to receive his ministry this Wednesday. On Thursday, Amy, the very powerful Amy, will be teaching us on the 10 hour prayer marathon. I want to invite you. And I want to ask that you bring a friend. We are doing these things because God has told us to do them. We are qualified or qualifying ourselves for ever increasing grace. Please, Dominic may reach out to you, our, our community manager. Um, please cooperate with him. And um, we are trying to bring a total revamp, um, both at the tribe and King Zaro. And if you've not downloaded Prayer Watch, the app that you can use to pray and ask God to supply you mercy so that you can access more grace, uh, I, want you, I want to encourage you to do so. Grace is the energy through which God builds in this realm. Anything you are doing needs grace, be it a marriage, be it child rearing or child bearing, or just running a business. Grace is needed. And that grace comes to aid you to achieve what you cannot achieve in 10 lifetimes in one lifetime. Well, how we get there is by asking God for mercy, 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 mercy. God bless you guys. Victoria, any other announcements for a roundup? 
Any other announcements? Okay, so the announcement for the outreach, uh, but you have already taken it, but I don't know if you can elaborate more. Yes, 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 please. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, guys, the outreach ministry needs our support. We're going out to cater to and minister to 60 widows. And you can donate financially or donate supplies. This particular outreach event is going to be happening in Abuja, Nigeria. However, we do have the same thing being planned in Ghana. And hopefully, very soon, the same thing will be planned in Kenya as well. Um, we're looking to also establish our outreach ministry in South Africa. Outreach is reaching out. As many as want to join the outreach ministry, it's an open ministry arm. You can donate old clothes that you no longer use. You can donate, um, you know, anything tin tomatoes, whatever you have in excess or whatever you have that you would have thrown away, the outreach events can be used. Those things can be used rather during our outreach events. I want to encourage you to um, make that available to them. What we do as a tribe, as a ministry, is we match 50% what the members, members in the outreach department have come up with. So if they raise um 50,000 naira for instance we would come in as a ministry and donate an extra 50,000 naira so they can buy a lot of things that they want to buy we've done two previous events this year the first was we went to the school of special needs kids in Nigeria and Lagos um, number two was the one we did in the hospital in Ghana and uh, Madam Binta and Nas peer-headed that initiative the leaders of the outreach are Mercy, Obe, and Madame Binta in Ghana. Um, you can support us in any way you want, because if you're doing that, if you're supporting and donating, um, just so you know, it will count as though you, were, you went out on the field as well. I want to encourage you to please be a part of the outreach events. And you can just be a part of it in Ghana or in Kenya or Nigeria, just be a part of the team. We're looking for more hands in outreach. To, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. All right, I've done that, Victoria. Um, Wednesday will be on the altar, same time. Thursday, 10 hour prayer marathon. It will shut down, I believe, it's on the 21st or 22nd of December, and then resume operations on the 4th of January, 2024. So, guys, please be a part of what we are doing. The Lord bless and honor you guys. Thank you. Our Christianity is not just one of speaking and talking. Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. And for that reason, we want you to be a part of that initiative. Thanks and God bless you. All right. Over to you, Victoria. If there are no more announcements, I can end the meeting. Yes, sir. No more announcements, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. If you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you've not been baptized, you don't speak in tongues, we're trying to organize that for King Zaro. Can I see your hand? If you're on here, you don't speak in tongues, can we see your hand? You want the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Is there, are there any such people here so that we can do that one time? Is there anybody like that? Okay. All right. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day and time. As we go home, um, guide us, bless our families, protect us, teach us your ways, your will, and what you will have us do to please you more and more. We live to please you, to pleasure you. That's our greatest joy, our greatest desire. There's somebody on this call the Lord says to tell you that before this month comes to the to an end, you are going to have a seat at the table. I'm seeing that very clearly. Before this month comes to an end, you will have a seat at the table. I don't know what that means to you, but that is the word of the Lord for somebody here. 
before this month comes to an end, you will have a seat, a seat at the table. There's somebody else you're worried about your child. The Lord says, do not worry. Affliction will not arise a second time. Don't worry. I'm with you. I'm with you. Thank you, Father, for reaching out to us in our need. There's somebody else on here. God has been giving you a series of dreams and visions. And he says to tell you that he's raising you up in the prophetic. He's building you up in the prophetic. And so, Father, we ask that that person will be submitted to you and will learn to do your ways and do your things to bring about a glory in their life. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you on Wednesday.